And so I want to charge any athletes who are in this room who are of Falcons, and I might like to know where you Falcons are, or Falcons to be, that the C can stand for those things that are virtues that make us athletes. For example, the C can stand for courage and conviction, for putting your heart and soul into what you do, for believing that you can reach goals and reach them and surpass them, to give gratitude to coaches who act as mentors in our lives and without whom we would not later become women who become leaders in this world and mentor others. And also, it can mean confidence and commitment. It's teamwork that makes the dreams work. All it takes is all you have to give. Uh, I never said it would be easy. Athletes never say and coaches never say that it, it wouldn't be worth it, however. Champions keep playing until they get it right, according to some famous tennis player named Billie Jean King. I want to charge you with a challenge. What began here years ago for me became the icing on the beginning of my athletic cake. And so I challenge all of you in this room for whatever roles you play now and in the future to pass along the legacy I'm so grateful I received here. And I thank you, all of you. Susan Cox, uh, Laura Hennessy, and Gabby Lopez uh, for driving me all the way up here from Philadelphia. I am very grateful to be home, and I thank you all. Go Falcons! <laughs>
leaders of the world to make the world a far better place.
not that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition to that, uh, she received the Alumni Award in 2005, which to me is the, the penultimate acknowledgement of her dedication to the college, because we, the alums, elect our selected person that's the best for that year. And that indeed is a deep honor of being, um, well, not so well respected, but at least an alum of Cedar Crest. Um, she's still dedicated to our beautiful college. She is still participating as uh, an admissions representative for the college. She has served on the alumni uh, executive board, and she participates in the union events, remains an outspoken advocate for, for our college um, in the community, and I believe in, in quite a large, vast uh, arena uh, beyond the Lehigh Valley. She has dedicated her career to, to students in their college experience, um, in particular women. And for that, we're very, very thankful. Right? Very thankful. Um, for me personally, Heidi was a, my mentor as I was going through school. Um, she provided me lots of provocative, sometimes sarcastically humorous um, guidance. But because of her, I was able to make my, my uh, journey through Cedar Crest uh, in a much more robust and a much more deep way. Um, she was trying to put the, the harness on the horse. Of course, you can see now it didn't work. <laughs> but, but because of her warmth and because of her sincere dedication to me as an individual, um, I was able to prosper from Cedar Crest. Heidi, it is indeed my, my, my pleasure and privilege to, to honor you in a way and um, invite you to receive this beautiful award. the Cedar Crest College Athletic Hall of Fame, and I am even more thrilled at the evolution of the athletics program at Cedar Crest over the last 40 years. I came to Cedar Crest before Title IX was passed. Many of my classmates had not had the opportunity to play sports in high school other than in gym class. I was the exception, thanks to a remarkable woman named Ethel Enke. Ms. Enke was the director of athletics at Radnor, long before there were many other female directors of athletics anywhere in the country. She made sure that both boys and girls had the opportunity to play interscholastic sports. In addition to being the athletic director, she also coached many of the girls' teams. I played field hockey for Miss Enke, as my mother had played field hockey for Miss Enke years before. Miss Enke was a tough coach. She used to tell us before we would scrimmage in practice, girls, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Then the scrimmage would end and she would yell, losers! <laughs> so we learned to play hard. My mother had also played basketball at Radnor High School, but I was not destined to follow in her footsteps in that way. Every time
time Ms. Enke watched me try to make a layup and I missed, she would shake her head and say, you are not your mother's daughter. <laughs> that did not go well. But it was at Radnor that I learned to love another sport, which was relatively new to the high school scene at that time. That was lacrosse. I loved everything about it. I loved the precision passing that is such a beautiful part of the women's game. I loved the daring do of the successfully completed backward shuffle shot. And I love the freedom of a sport that is played on a field that has no boundaries. When I got to Cedar Crest, I played field hockey with talented athletes like Peggy Kupia, Elaine Schaefer, and Carol Fisher, women I might not have gotten to know if it hadn't been for sports. Our coach was Dari Hannon, who headed the athletic program at Cedar Crest for more than 40 years and who oversaw, with support from Dean Nellie Mangus, the transition at Cedar Crest from club sports to intercollegiate sports. Ms. Hannon really did believe in the importance of sportswomanship. And it was in the early stages of our intercollegiate competition here at Cedar Crest, so we had a lot of catching up to do. We lost a lot, but we were gracious about it. We always served the members of the opposing team punch and cookies after every home game. It certainly was a different era. In the spring, it was time to play lacrosse, but Cedar Crest had no lacrosse team, and I